Hey, what's up guys? So recently I made a video where I used this device to turn any TV I want on or off. So here's how to make it. One thing I do want to say, if you do make this be courteous, don't be a dick. All the TVs I shut off, I did turn back on. Uh, this is just something fun to do. I'm actually using this as part of another project uh, dealing with IR LEDs. So just keep that in mind. So I just edited the entire video and it came out to be 40 minutes long. So instead, I'm going to do some voicing over uh, to try to shorten it up a little bit. But basically, you want to go to this website here. I'll leave a link for you in the description below. We won't be making the same exact one that he does in this write-up, uh, but it, it will be very similar. Um, I have changed some things, as uh, you'll see coming up soon, and we also won't be using a few of the parts that he has uh, listed in the parts list. We won't be using the 5 volt voltage regulator that he has listed in the parts list. Instead, we'll be using a uh, 5 volt Pololu voltage regulator, which you can see here. Uh, I find that this just works better. It, makes the package mount better. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about later on. Also the three millimeter LED that he has listed as optional, we won't be using that or the second 150 ohm resistor. Uh, the reason he added those in is because when you press the button the LED will light up and it lets you know if it is working and if your battery is dead or not but uh, you don't need that to test it. All I do is uh, pull my cell phone out and turn the camera on and press the button on our little thing and you can see the uh, IR LEDs lighting up using your camera phone. Another thing you will need is this uh, tiny AVR programmer. You don't absolutely have to use it. You can program these uh, microprocessors using an Arduino board or many other uh, different tool sticks but I find this to be the easiest to use and uh, even though it is $20 if you do a lot of projects like this, it is well worth it. If you do decide to purchase this programmer, uh, whenever you plug it into your computer, your computer probably isn't going to automatically install the drivers that it needs. Uh, mine didn't, so I had to find the drivers. I'll leave this uh, link to this website in the description below. You can just scroll down and download the driver there. Uh, once you download the driver, you will have to unpack it, unzip it, and then uh, go to your device manager and uh, install the driver your, yourself. To do that you can just type in device manager this will pop up. Uh, I can't remember what your computer names it uh, the first time you plug it in but basically once you get the driver installed it will be under libusb uh, named USB tiny. You may also want to pick up a cable kind of like this that has a male and female USB ends because uh, coming up soon we will have to run some wires between this tool stick and a breadboard. If you're using a laptop you should be fine but if you're using a desktop then this is almost a necessity. So before we begin we have to flash the hex file onto the chip uh, to make everything work. If you look on the chip you'll see a dot and that dot means that that leg that's next to is uh, leg number one and I'm going to mention the leg order many times throughout this video so keep that in mind but basically the order goes one two three and four and then on the other side it continues five six seven and eight yeah, so they they go counterclockwise on the tiny programmer you'll see another dot that means that that is the where the front of the chip goes so make sure you're getting pin one where pin one you know make sure you have the pin order correct once you have the chip in, it should look something like this. Then go ahead and plug it in into your computer. If you don't already have AVR Dude, which we will be using, then you can just click on that link, which will take you to this website. It's a few pages long, but it's a really good read, really good write-up. Uh, you can also download AVR Dude from there, and uh, they explain exactly how to use it and how it works. So definitely check that out. Now you just want to open up your command prompt. Uh, you can open it up just by searching for it like I am here and there you go. Now using what you see at the bottom of that website you want to type that into the command prompt exactly how it's typed here. Um, 
except for the the a I did not capitalize the a make sure that you put spaces in between you know where you need spaces uh, where you see the dash uppercase u make sure you are uppercasing it because there is a uh, big difference between uppercase and lowercase and also the thing that looks like a capitalized o is actually a zero so keep that in mind if you didn't type it in exactly correct then once you press enter you will see a message that looks something like this but if you do type everything in correctly and you press enter then you should see something like this now it's time to get out a breadboard and plug in your 8 gigahertz resonator and we will be running some wires between the breadboard and the tiny programmer I use some standard wires like this with melons on both sides uh, but on the resonator the left and right pins coming from it needs to go to pins 2 and 3 on the uh, microprocessor the middle pin on the resonator is ground and that will go to the ground on the processor which is pin number 4 and when I say the left and right pins on the resonator goes to pins 2 and 3 on the microprocessor it doesn't matter um, there, there is no specific order you may notice on that website with the write-up that he uses uh, he places his chip on the breadboard itself but we won't be doing that so completely ignore that I mean you can you can do that if you choose not to buy the tiny programmer um, I'm just letting you be aware of that now you want to uh, click this link to download the files that we need uh, once they are downloaded then unzip them then go to wherever you downloaded and unzip them and find the hex file uh, really this is the only file that we need after you have found that hex file then just cut it and then go to your uh, C drive and then uh, to users find your uh, username or whatever and place that hex file underneath your uh, you know username under C drive which you can see I have here at the very bottom next on that uh, website with the write-up you want to hit the next button go to the next page open up your command prompt again and type in uh, exactly what he has written here and if you type in exactly right then you should be seeing something that looks like this and once it's done uploading everything you should be seeing something that looks like this and once you see that you can uh, disconnect it from your computer unplug everything all the wires pull your uh, microprocessor out the programmer and we can move on to everything else first we will put our LEDs together uh, we will be using 12 LEDs uh, I have six narrow beam and six wide beam you don't have to use uh, you know half and half you can make them all wide beam or all narrow beam it's up to you so we are going to put these LEDs together in four groups of three and then combine all four groups into one big group uh, if you don't know the difference between positive and negative uh, the longer leg is going to be positive shorter leg is negative so taking these three LEDs on the first one I'm going to bend the negative at a 90 degree angle and then the second LED I will bend both of those at 90 degree angles and then the third one I'm bending the positive at a 90 degree angle and you want the uh, negative going to a positive and then the uh, you know negative going to positive and basically you don't want two positives touching you don't want two negatives touching you can't really tell on camera but if you look at your LEDs there's a little flat spot I'm going to take my wire cutters and cut right in the middle of that flat spot once you have cut uh, two of the legs shorter then you just want to tin with solder uh, those shortened ends and then you will just solder the two LEDs together uh, you want them touching as close as possible and try to keep it as straight as possible and then after you have added in the third LED you should have something that looks like this uh, where you have one positive lead and then one negative lead now do that with the uh, three other sets once you've made your four sets then it's time to put them together to make something that looks like this just remember uh, we're going to put the narrow beam LEDs in the center and the wide beam LEDs on the outsides this time when we uh, connect all four sets of LEDs we do want all the negatives connected to one another and all the positives connected to one another there is a specific way I'm going to put these together so if you hold your LEDs with a negative on top 
uh, and with the LEDs facing to the left, I'm going to bend the negative and positive backwards, which will give you something that looks like this. I know it doesn't make much sense to you right now of why there's a specific way I'm putting these together, but uh, the end result is we need the uh, there's going to be one positive and one negative lead going to all these LEDs and we need the negative to be on top and the positive to be on the bottom. To put these together uh, I just tin these leads a little bit with solder and then I hold them in place the best I can and then just tack them together. Once you've put them all together you should have something that looks like this. Now we can go ahead and uh, use our wire cutters to trim up the leads that we don't need. You can trim the leads of the LEDs in the center and also the uh, LEDs that where we bent the leads around, you can trim the excess off of that too. And that will give you something that looks like this. Uh, like I said, I have the negative on top and the positive on the bottom. Now we can start putting everything else together. Uh, remember, like I said, that dot on the chip shows where uh, pin number one is. What we're going to do first is bend pin 1 and 8 around uh, to contact one another. Now, once you have done that, you should have something that looks like this. Now we just want to place a little bit of solder on top to make sure that they stay together. Also, pin number 7 we can cut off because we won't be using it at all. Now you just want to get the capacitor and it's going to go underneath the chip. The longer leg is positive, shorter leg is negative. The negative leg will be going to pin number four on the chip, which is our ground. Like I said, there will be a lot of things going to this ground, so make sure you make enough room for everything. And then the positive on the capacitor is actually going to go to pins one and eight that we bent around and soldered together. And that will give you something that looks like this. Uh, the excess leads coming from the capacitor, you can trim that off after you have soldered them on to pins 4 and also on pins 1 and 8. And that should give you something that looks like this once you've trimmed it up. Now it's time to add in the 8 megahertz resonator. First thing you want to do is bend the pins at about a 90 degree angle. Now this part is going to sound really confusing, but the middle pin on the resonator is actually the ground and that needs to go to pin 4 on the chip which is on the corner, that's why I'm bending it. Then the two leads on uh, the ends of the resonator needs to go to pins two and three on the chip. So that's why I'm bending the other one. But you don't want the ground and the other one that you're bending touching one another. So on the chip, I'm going to push one of the pins in towards the capacitor and then, uh, which is pin number four, and then pin three, I'm actually going to pull out a little bit. I'm going to put it together like this with the resonator underneath the capacitor. Uh, before I put it together, I'm going to pre tin the leads of the resonator and the chip. And then once it's soldered on, it should look something like this. Uh, remember, like I said, you don't want uh, the leads from the resonator touching one another. Now it's time to add in the transistor. I will be mounting this uh, closer to uh, pins 4 and 5. Uh, with the flat part facing out. If you look at the transistor with the flat part facing you, uh, the lead on the left is ground and that will be going to the ground on the chip which is pin 4. Uh, the middle lead we won't mess with right now and then the lead all the way to the right we will actually bend straight up on the uh, flat part of the transistor. And here you will see where I bent the left lead around backwards soldering it onto pin 4 of the chip. Now it's time to add in the 150 ohm resistor between the middle lead of the transistor and uh, pins 5 and 6 of the, uh, of the chip. To do this, I'm actually going to bend pins 5 and 6 together, touching one another, and solder them together just like we did with pins 1 and 8, and then add in the resistor between those uh, legs and the transistor's middle lead and that will give you something that looks like this. After you've made it this far, you can go ahead and trim off the excess leads from the resistor and transistor, uh, giving you something that looks like this. And here are some close-up images that I took with my camera to give you a better idea of how everything is going together so far. Now if you look at your Pololu voltage regulator, you will see Vn, which is voltage in, 
G and D, which is ground, V out, which is voltage out. And uh, depending on which model you buy, you may also have a shutdown, but we won't be using that one. Uh, then get your switch. The switch I have here is actually the same switch that he's left the link to uh, in his write-up on that website we were looking at earlier. You don't have to use a switch exactly like this. You can use any switch you want. I just like using this one because the leads are so long and you'll see why coming up soon. So what I'm going to do now is cut this little knobby in off of the switch and then for the other lead I will cut that exactly half the length of the first lead which will give you something that looks like this. Then just solder the long lead of the switch to voltage in on the voltage regulator. Also take note that I did this on the back side of it. Uh, there's a reason for that. It's actually going to save us more space uh, in the long run. Then I just use a little bit of hot glue to mount this whole assembly onto the voltage regulator, uh, just butting it up against the switch and centering it the best I can. Now it's time to add in the LED assembly that we made. Uh, Hopefully you made yours to where the negative is on top and positive is on the bottom. Before I join the two halves together though, I will add in hot glue in between the large cracks of the LEDs and also a lot of hot glue on the back side. Uh, this will keep them from breaking apart when you have this in your pocket or something like that. To join the two halves together, uh, if you remember on your transistor the lead on the right that we bent straight up, that will go to the negative lead of your LEDs and then the positive lead coming from the LEDs will go to uh, the shorter side of the switch that we trimmed down earlier. And after you've done that, you can go ahead and trim the excess leads from everything. Now it's time to add in some wire. Uh, I placed one wire coming from the ground on the voltage regulator, and that is going to uh, pin four on the chip, the same pin four that we've been using for all the other grounds. Uh, the other wire is coming from the voltage out on the voltage regulator and that is soldered on to pins 1 and 8. Here's some more close-up pictures to give you a better idea of how everything is looking. Uh, now you may want to, uh, I just took a piece of plastic and I cut it to be about the same size of the 9 volt battery and I will hot glue this onto the battery and then hot glue the entire assembly on top of the plastic piece. Uh, the reason I do this is because uh, when it's time to change your batteries, if you hot glue everything you've made directly onto the battery, uh, you're more than likely going to break it all when you try to remove it. But with the plastic piece in between, you can just pull the plastic piece off the battery when it's time to change the batteries. That way nothing gets damaged. Before you plug your 9 volt battery connector in, uh, what I'm doing here is cutting the ends off. That way if they accidentally touch one another, they won't short, you know, short out against one another. Now with everything in place, uh, we can shorten these wires as much as possible. The positive wire is going to go to uh, the uh, positive lead coming from the LEDs or the short side of the switch, it, it doesn't matter which one you use. And then the ground wire is going to go to, uh, once again, pin 4 on the chip. And that will give you something that should look like this. Now it's time to test everything out. Uh, just be very careful, everything is still very brittle. We will fix that in just a second, but uh, like I said earlier, we did not add in the extra LED and resistor to light up whenever you press the button. Uh, I, don't, I don't like that because it takes up more space. What I do is I just use my camera phone on my phone. Uh, you can, well, human eye can't see IR LEDs, but cameras can, so I just point it towards my camera and turn it on, and that way I know if it's you know working or not. Uh, next, test on TV. Uh, it should turn the TV on and off. Just remember that it's not instant. It does take a while. Uh, depending on, some TVs take longer than others depending on where they come on the list of codes. You have to remember this is flashing like over 200 different codes. Uh, so sometimes it might take a second, sometimes it might take 15 seconds. Uh, it all just depends. If you test it and it is not working, then go ahead and try to uh, fix the problem. If it is working, then you can go ahead and hot glue everything. Uh, personally, I just pump this full of hot glue because uh, on the first versions that I made, just keeping it in my pocket, things would uh, bend or break off. The solder, sometimes the solder would break. Sometimes things would bend and short against one another. Uh, so after that, I just started pumping this full of hot glue which looks something like this. Uh, now I can definitely keep it in my pocket. I don't have to worry about anything shorting out against one another or breaking off. 
and stuff like that. Also, you want to put a lot of hot glue around the switch because those little leads coming from the switch are very flimsy. People with heavy fingers uh, were breaking my switch off all the time. But anyway, like, subscribe, let me know if you guys want me to make something else. Uh, and that's it. I'll see you guys around. Nasty track.